So gonna get a quick workout in, go for a little bit of a run, get the blood flowing. In yesterday's episode, we were kind of kidding around, did, did a kind of a fake run, but today we'll do it for real. Guys, follow David Michael back with another video, and today I'm here at St. Edward's playing some football with some young adults from the parish. You know, we just came out for some competition, fellowship, just having a good time. <laughs> That's pretty good. Just came out for some competition, some fellowship, just having a good Christian isn't about trying to make this life perfect. It's about trying to be perfect. Cause you know heaven's gonna be worth it. Heaven's like sitting in a church where you know that you belong. Heaven's like watching people smile when you sing them a song. Heaven's like going to a concert to save unborn kids. Come to think of it, maybe heaven's just a little like this. Heaven's like tonight, time's a billion. Plus even more friends And we never have to go home Cause the party would never end No I don't Know if I'm right No I don't Know if I'm right No I don't Know if I'm right But if I had to guess I'm not afraid I'd say heaven's wide I'm not I'd say heaven's wide Concerts for Life, which is a benefit concert we do each year supporting Houston Pregnancy Help Center. So my dad has always been involved in pro-life work. He did a lot of it before I was born. Each year they would do a fundraising dinner, right? Which was always very successful, but they were looking for different ways to branch out. So the summer before I entered seminary, when I was 18, my dad said, how about you do a benefit concert for them? You've been writing all of this music, you play all these instruments, why not put it to good use for a good cause? So we decided to do Concert for Life. We brought some other priests and seminarians in. I continued to write different songs and it's been a lot of fun and good for vocations and really hopefully a huge support to the Pregnancy Help Centers here. Music as art should be something that is beautiful, that draws us outside of ourselves, draws us to eternity, draws us to God, and hopefully brings about a positive change in our Christian lives. Throughout the whole time, I've really been just in awe of how God works in our lives, right? When you come to follow Jesus, you might think that you're giving up who you are when really what God wants to do is use everything you are for His glory. When you follow Christ, when you become a priest, He doesn't want to get rid of all of your talents and your gifts. He just wants you to use them for something eternal. So the concert we do each summer is in support of Houston Pregnancy Help Centers. And so today I'm actually at Houston Pregnancy Help Centers to talk with their director and their staff here about the life-saving work they're doing every day. Michael. How's it going? How are you? Good to see you. It's so good to see you too. Praise God. Thank you so much for letting me come by. Oh, thank you for being here. We're so happy for, to have your presence here. Thank it's you. A, it's an honor. I always yeah. forget when I come here how beautiful it is. Oh, yes. And that's for a reason because we want every woman to know that we value her and we value the life that's inside of her. So mm. she is worth the beauty. She's worth the investment in this organization because we want her to feel peaceful, at home, quiet, and loved on when she comes in. I love that. 
This is Sylvia Johnson. She is one of mm -hmm. the most incredible people I've ever met in my life. She's mm -hmm. the director of the Houston Pricey Help Centers here. And I've known you since I was really little, I think, yes. uh, since I was just a little kid. Mm -hmm. um, but I would love to hear how you got into this ministry, how mm -hmm. you met my dad, who yes. does a lot of work here as well, yeah. um, and how this place kind of came to be. There was a young lady that became pregnant in my church, and I was just a teenager, and I was looking for resources to help her because my church had nothing for her. So I started calling around in my city, and I found that there was nothing available to her. The only thing that they had to offer was abortion services. Wow. So I called this one lady lady and she gave me a pro-life one-on-one. -on -one. And then after that, she gets me up and takes me to show me where the abortion clinic was. It was in my neighborhood. I passed it on my way to church and had no idea that this was happening right right near where I lived and went to worship. And when my kids went to school, there was an abortion facility. And at that point, I knew it was something that I had to do. It was something that I needed to do. And um, and God took it from there. You know? Wow. Yeah. So what was the next step? How did you end up getting involved? I would hear the missionaries at my church. They would always go to other countries and come back and tell these miracle stories. But I was like, well, why are there no miracles right here in our city? So that burden was on my heart to open a pregnancy center, which I didn't know what that was at the time. And, um, and it happened. I called around. I found this Christian ministry. And this guy said to me, Sylvia, I have been praying for something like this. Why don't you come on in? I had nothing. I had no knowledge. I had no training. This was back in 1985. So what I had in my hand was a coupon book. And I wrote to every company that I had on my coupon book and asked for free items to start wow. the program. Wow. And I want to tell you, hundreds of boxes arrived with pamphlets, samples, everything. <laughs> Could you believe that? That's and incredible. we started a pregnancy program. It's yeah. beautiful. I feel like this is like a Michelangelo, right, you know, right. sculpture here. Yeah. It's just yeah. incredible. Yeah. It's mesmerizing. Yeah. This is Miss Blessing. I love your name, by the way. <laughs> Could that be a better name? She is a blessing. Interesting thing about when we opened here in 2008, your father, Rex Moses, was very integral in this. That was Planned Parenthood. Wow. That was that Planned building. Parenthood. And your dad wanted us to be right here, yeah. right in the moment. So every day I would come to work and I would park right here. And the doctor who did the abortions would park on the other side of the fence. Wow. We would look at each other eye to eye. And I would come in here and save babies and he would go in there to do the opposite. Oh my God. There were pro-life people out front. There were sidewalk counselors out front. <laughs> There was a battle, if you can imagine, come to work every day. Oh, yeah. And this is right next door to us. So this is a really important reason why your dad wanted us to be here at that moment. Wow. This is our, um, our grace closet. And we call it grace because it's by God's grace that we have these items in here. Everything in here is brand new. So when a woman calls or comes in the door and says she's pregnant, she's scared, what, what's your game plan? Like, how do you go into that? What, what can you provide for her? Okay, all of our services are free. Our services are confidential within the law. She will receive a free pregnancy test, a free ultrasound to confirm the viability of the pregnancy and the location of the pregnancy. She will free, receive free case management services. These are services that will connect her to community resources and referrals, uh, almost like their very own pregnancy assistant. Concierge. Coach. Yeah, <laughs> concierge, concierge, that's the perfect word, uh, throughout her pregnancy. We have educational classes, a support classes for parenting, new moms, first time moms to be, we have them in a class together because we find out that a lot of our women who have abortions are first-time moms. So we immediately connect them together in a community, yeah. in, a, in a network so they can uh, strengthen, be strengthened and encouraged by each other. So we have a, a nurse on staff. We have prenatal vitamins. We have a doctor here if you're having morning sickness. She can call in a prescription so that that can go away. We have... Um, 
um, daddy classes. We're open six days a week. We're open at night. We are here available. We're available 24 hours. We have the abortion pill reversal. We also have medical um, mobile vans that go into the community. We have one mobile van that's going into nine high schools right now in the city. Wow. Nine different high schools every single week. Yes, because the high schools are now wanting our services. Yeah, oh, that's there. a miracle. Yeah, so incredible. we also have adoption information and adoption education for those moms who are considering adoption as well. Right. And uh, and I mean, we, we our goal is to be her helper, her assistant, her concierge throughout her pregnancy so that we can enable her and empower her to become a successful mom or a successful birth mom, whichever one she chooses. Wow. Well, it sounds like anything that they could need. Yes. <laughs> it's basically, yeah. your goal is to provide anything they could right. possibly need. That's right. Which is incredible. Yeah, really and we really love good. it. We love every day. Everything is free. There's no charge for any of our services. The staff is committed. We all love what we do. We're committed to what we're doing. And last year, we had 25,000 client visits in one year. No way. And we want to surpass that this year. We want to do more than that this year. In this city alone, we want to do more. So yes. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May God who has given us power over the works of our hands be with all of us. O oh God, in your wise providence, you are glad to bless us all with labor, the work of our hands and of our minds. Grant that all who plan and conduct work in this space may through your guidance and support come the right decisions in ministry and carry them out fail. Thank you so much for just the work that you do, the way, the way in which you do it with such joy. And thanks for letting us come by today. It has been such a gift to see what you do. And Thank we'll you keep you guys it. in prayer. <laughs> Thank you so much. And we'll be in touch about the concert this summer. Yay, concert coming. for life. There it is, there it is. <laughs> <laughs>been like a day maybe that I found out that I was pregnant and I was very you know all the emotions I was confused I didn't know what to do I needed guidance and you know the first thing that popped in my head it was I need to talk to someone at church because mm -hmm. you know God's putting me at this test right now and before I make any decision I need to talk to 
And yeah, she told me to talk to you. Well, I remember when I called, I was so impressed by your faith because I could tell you were you know, overwhelmed, right? There was a lot going on. Yes. And yet I remember you saying, I, I know that if God has put me here, God's gonna take care of me. You know, and you really couldn't see how at that moment. Yeah, I knew what I wanted to do is have this baby. It was going to be hard, but I just needed someone to, to believe just how I believe. Yeah, and it seems like you really found that at the, the pregnancy center, right? Yes, talking to all the volunteers and the staff there, they really helped me find my strengths that, you know, that I can have this baby and I can still have my life and, yeah. Just everyone there was so amazing. Everyone helped me. They were so nice. I was, I was a bit scared at first. Of course. Because you're talking to strangers or people that you don't know, but they made me feel very at home. They made me feel very welcome. And you know, that if I needed anything, they, they were going to be there. Yeah. It was very nice. Well, I remember Sylvia told me, when, when I told her about your situation, the first thing she said was, well, first thing we're gonna do is just love on her. <laughs> when she comes in, we're just gonna love on her. And I remember talking to the director of the center and I was just crying myself and how beautiful it was. And I was so eager for you to walk through those doors and, and to feel that love from them. At first I thought, oh, I'm too young to be a mom, you know, like maybe I'm not mature enough to take care of a baby. And, you know, I, I don't have a job and I don't have like, how can I take care of a baby? But they made me understand like, no, like you're a smart woman, like you can, you know, all your dreams, like Philip is gonna be there with you. <laughs> that made me feel so special. <laughs> because... <laughs> and now I understand it all. Yeah. When I got to hold Philip in my hands, <laughs> it was the, I felt God's love at that moment. You know, everything that I went through, a lot of people, told me, oh no, you won't be a good mom. Like, you know, you, why are you doing this to this child? And I said, no, like, God knows that I'm ready to be a mom, God. He put so many people in my way that helped me. You know, when I didn't know what to do and I was scared, you know, they told me, call Father David and, and, and we talked, you know, and, and then you told me, talk to, go to the pregnancy center. And then I felt better. And just along the way, I had so much help. God was sending angels to, to help me <laughs> yeah. through the way, you know, like, yeah. I, I didn't feel alone. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's huge, right? I yes. mean, that changes everything when you don't yes. feel like you're alone. And I love what you said that they, they told you, hey, your dreams are still there and Philip will be with you. Yes. Yes. And then I got a text from you one day and said, hey, this is Philip. <laughs> it was a picture of, of Philip. Yeah, because when I was at the hospital, I was so happy, you know, the, I was full of joy. And I wanted to thank everyone that helped me wow. get to, to my goal, you yeah. know. Just wanted you to, to see that with, with your help, with your advice, Philip is now here, <laughs> you know, you, you helped me. And then the next text I got from you later was, hey, could you, could you baptize Philip? <laughs> and I, of course, was like, yeah, let's do it. And I'm so glad you, 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 know, you reached out and invited me to be a part of that. <laughs> being born into this life and then being born into a eternal life, you know, through yes. baptism is, is everything. So <laughs> is there anything you'd want to say to young women who may be, you know, might be in the position you were in, in terms of uh, feeling scared, feeling alone, um, what you maybe want to tell them? You might feel scary at first, because your, your life is gonna change completely. I think my life changed for the best. Now I am more secure of myself. I, my faith is even stronger because God, at the moment when I found out I was pregnant, God was speaking to me. He, he told me, you can do this with you and I'm here with you. Don't be scared. No matter what other people tell you, it's all worth it when you get to hold your baby. It's all worth it. <laughs> well, I want to say just thank you for having the courage to 
to to say yes to something that was totally must have been totally overwhelming yes. and to to have faith ultimately right and saying god i'm not sure how you're going to do this yes. but but i really trust that you're going to provide um and when we make that that act of trust we see how he does provide so thank you for letting me be part of this journey thanks yes, for your courage and i'm excited to see where god continues to do in your dreams the dreams that you'll experience with philip yes. so yeah <laughs> People ask me all the time if I always have to wear the collar. And the answer is that I almost always do wear the collar, mainly because I just have so many wonderful experiences with people out in public. Just the other day I was eating lunch and a guy stopped my, by my table in the restaurant and was like, hey, thanks for everything you do. And then he just walked off and that was it. Just because I was wearing a collar. You know, in that moment, I'm a representative for them of the church and hopefully of Jesus Christ himself and of the world. But the few times I don't wear my collar, I'm usually working out. So today I have regular clothes on. Um, we're about to play football with some of the young adults. Um, they're pretty competitive and pretty athletic, so we'll see how it goes. So this is Luke, he's one of our all-star young adults, and he does a pretty good impression of my social media voiceover, so. What's up guys, Father David Michael back with another video, and today I'm here at St. Edward's playing some football with some young adults from the parish, you know, we just came out for some competition, fellowship, just having a good time. <laughs> That's pretty good, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. Just came out for some competition, some fellowship, just having a good time. Sylvia, the director of the Pregnancy Center, told me that when she first met with Sophia, at one point, Sophia started crying. Sophia asked, why are you crying? Sophia responded, because you said you believed in me. It's crazy to me that some people think those in the church only want people to not have abortions and don't really care about the mother or the baby. Anyone who thinks that needs to go spend a day with Sylvia, who says, when a woman walks in, the first thing we do is love on her. They need to spend a day with the women and men working so hard at the pregnancy center to make sure those in need around them have their support. Because this is the church, the concert for life, the pregnancy center, the sacrament of baptism, this is the work of the church, and I've never seen anything more joyful. Thanks for joining us on Unscripted, a program brought to you in collaboration with Shalom World. To continue enjoying Unscripted and many other shows, you can download the free Shalom World app on your smart TV or mobile device, or visit shalomworld.org to discover a plethora of faith-filled resources and inspiring entertainment, all at your fingertips. Shalom World relies on the generous support of viewers like you to produce programs like Unscripted and many others. Your donations make a difference, allowing Shalom World to continue spreading the message of hope that comes from the gospel. So please consider donating. God bless.